Welcome to In the Mood to Scrap. This is Christina Nikolai White. This week's mood board is all about handwriting. If you've known me or followed me over the years, you know that I'm obsessed with handwriting, telling my story in my own handwriting, and how important I feel that it is. Um, I tell all of my stories and all of my scrapbooking in my own handwriting, and I have for a really long time. And so lately, I've been really attracted to um, putting my own handwriting on other things or right onto photos or right into my journaling pages like you see here in some of these examples. A really hot trend right now is to do big black bold script handwriting or calligraphy and um, so as you can see I have both of those examples on my mood board this week. This is an iPhone photo that I snapped um, of my daughter in a moment then I think that the photo tells a really important story, something that I didn't want to forget, um, or just seems so poignantly her in that moment and who she is right now. And I wanted to do something quick and easy. I don't always have the time to do a full time or a full size layout. And so this was an easy thing for me to do to print out this photo and then to just uh, plan a quick embellishment and handwriting to tell my story. So a quick summary of the things that I have here, uh, a piece of cardstock that I'm going to put underneath my layout, some washi tape that I've gathered in um, complementary colors, these are from my mind's eye, um, maybe a couple others, my scissors, a pencil, I do a lot of things in pencil first, some of my pens, this is a Uniball pen, um, a Slick Writer, and a Zig Millennium pen, and I've got um, black paint and a fine tipped uh, paintbrush and water to do the script uh, painting and I'm going to probably use some of this flare this is some of our new two-piece flare we're designing and manufacturing this in-house so you can see it's flat backed so it just takes a glue dot to hold it onto the layout I may use some of these wood chips or I'm sorry wood veneer pieces a lot of these are from Studio Calico um, or Freckled Fawn I'm not quite sure yet if I'm going to but I just wanted to have them on hand to do some embellishment of my layout, some arrows, perhaps some stars. You know, they come in so many different shapes and sizes. And of course, en enamel dots. These ones are from Teresa Collins and uh, My Mind's Eye and some Freckled Fawn. I know I wanted to use some gray and black and um, some navy blue. That's why I pulled those in to use. Okay, so I've gone ahead and put adhesive on my uh, eight and a half by eleven white cardstock, and I'm just going to adhere my photo onto this just to give it a little more stability than what the photo paper has. I know that I want to use, um, as I said, some embellishments, um, probably some flare, probably one or two. I'm thinking up in this space where you can see the crack in the concrete from where she's sitting, and I just want to make sure I find just the right color um, to match what's in the photo, but also the thought and feeling behind my journaling. I'm pretty certain I'm going to go with this uh, two-toned pink and red heart. I like the contrasting colors on here. I've gone ahead and printed out um, just a regular print sheet of this photo because I wanted to practice and know exactly where I wanted everything to go. So I hand wrote my journaling um, on here and practiced the painting that I wanted to do to just have a good sense of where it was going to go. I always practice my journaling on something else before I do it on the photo actually or actually on my project. I've actually gone through with a piece of scratch paper and tested the tip of my paintbrush a couple of times to also how much water do I need, how much paint do I need, um, what exactly do I want this to look like, um, what should my technique be, and um, written it all out on a piece of paper. Um, as you can see, I scratched some of the things out just so I had the right wording and knew exactly what I wanted to do. I'm going to keep this um, extra sheet that I practiced on right ahead of me so that I have it um, within my eyesight as I'm working on this. I always test my pen on a different piece of paper before I go, go ahead onto my project, but um, at this point I'm just going to go right ahead and start transferring the journaling right on here. Eyeballing it according to the sample that I've already done and I'm just going to go ahead and start writing. I wanted my journaling to be pretty thin, so I'm using this incredibly fine point Zig Millennium pen. This is a matte photo paper versus a glossy photo paper. If you're using a glossy photo paper, I probably would use the Slick Writer by American Crafts. It's a really great pen for writing on such a surface, but this is, since this is matte, it's a lot easier for me to use this particular pen. I'm going to write journaling until I get to the spot where I want to paint. 
the title or her name and then I'm going to stop. I want to leave myself enough space and you could go ahead and write all the rest of that journaling but I want to make sure that I've got it just the place that I want it to be. Um, I'm going to bring a piece of scratch paper here so I can practice um, really quickly one more time. Bring my water closer and then I drop my paintbrush. I'm probably going to cover that up with some embellishments so for right now I'm not going to panic. I'm going to keep right on practicing. Um, I should probably have moved my project out of the way beforehand. That would have been the smart thing to do. I'm going to write this out a couple of times just so I make sure I get the right amount of thickness um, and see if I can get it the same all the way across in the word and I don't know that I can. The paint becomes so thick in the beginning and I don't think that I can add a letter in after but I'm going to try to see what happens if I go back and get more paint and it does make it look different. So I think that the way I'm going to do this is do the whole word all at once and then maybe go back in and add more paint later. Now that I've tested that out and decided how I'm going to do this, I'm going to go ahead and paint right on my photo. Get enough water on my paintbrush. Make sure that I'm happy with its consistency at the tip before I do so. And then I'm going to plunge right in and go ahead and paint. I'm going to do this all in one stroke without getting more paint. I'm pretty lucky it's a short name, it's a short title. I think I would do it the other way if it was a longer title. Um, but I think I'm going to practice really quickly on my scratch paper and see what it looks like if I go back in a second time with a little more paint and beef up the letters a little bit. Um, add a little more thickness, make it look a little more calligraphy. Um, like so that I can add that consistency straight across and it's not just the H that's really thick with paint but all of the letters. One more test. You could even do this where you purposefully make the under letter or the, under, the first word be want more water down and then come back in. It's almost like creating your own shadow. You could even do it with another color if you wanted to and have it like a, a light teal blue and then come with a darker teal blue. Just kind of um, practice and play with the different colors and see what kind of effects you can create. It could be really cool and really fun. I'm just adding a little more paint then to these to beef up these letters, make them a little more consistent so that they're thick black all the way through and not watered down at the end. I'm just going to go through and pull it through each of the letter strokes um, in places that seem to make sense. Not all of the letters need it, and it wouldn't be natural for some of the spaces or some of the letters to have thickness where it wouldn't be natural on your stroke as you're writing or painting. Um, I'm even going to go back and do these initial letters that have more paint on them just so that they all have the same consistency throughout. I think I'm happy with that. I think they all look pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and move this stuff to the side um, so that I can finish my journaling. Just going to pull this aside a little bit, make sure I like that guy still there. And then I'm going to finish this journaling up so that then I can finish the embellishment. I'm just going to make sure I pull my sample down again so that I get the right wording and I don't make any mistakes. Sometimes it's okay to shoot off the hip. Sometimes I've done that. Um, in my sample I didn't draw a heart. I actually wrote love. This time I decided to actually change that to a heart. I kind of like that um, brain dump kind of journaling where it just comes right out of my brain and I don't really think too hard about it. But on this particular layout I actually wanted to have it all spaced correctly in my head so I did do that sample. I'm just going to um, finish this up before I move on to embellishing. I want to make sure I leave a little bit of space down here at the bottom because I want to put a strip of paper but I don't want to cover up her shorts um, so I'm not going to put um, not, not put too much embellishment because I want to make sure that I don't cover up that part of the photo. And as I finish this up, I'm just going to draw a little heart, which is my signature at the end of all of my journaling. Okay, now that I have that all finished, I'm going to go 
through and do all of my embellishing. I'm just going to add a um, glue dot to the back of this flare. I want it at the end of that crack on the concrete. I like that that visual line that it creates and she's almost like she's looking at that little heart flare on the ground. This is just some paper strips, some scraps that I pulled out of my bin. Um, nothing major, just some vellum and a few gray pieces of paper. Um, my mind's eye wood grain and Amy Tan paper. I, I know I want to do something subtle, subtle um, nothing that's overwhelming. I was trying to decide if I wanted to do this. This is from October afternoon or um, a darker piece at the bottom to ground it a little bit more. Uh, this navy blue, this is from the Atlantic collection from Studio Calco. I think I'm going to do this um, darker paper. I like the way it grounds the layout. Not makes it, I don't want a light piece of paper down there, so I'm just going to go ahead and adhere it. And as I said, I wanted it to be a thin strip because I don't want to cover up her shorts, since that is one of the things I'm trying to point out in my journaling is her tendency to wear these short little cutoff shorts right now. Super simple. Add that little strip on there. Nothing more than that. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to add this gray. This is like a t-shirty kind of material print on this strip of paper, and that's kind of why I want it there since that also adds a little bit more layer to the journaling than I've had on there. I like these three papers together, so I think I'm going to use these. I just want to make this one um, thinner, and so I'm just going to cut it just with my scissors. It's just easier when it's this thin that, rather than trying to put it through my trimmer. And um, test it out with these other papers. I'm pretty sure I'm going to layer this vellum over the top of that too. I just like the feeling that this light gray and the vellum adds to this layout. Not a lot of color, and but it's kind of airy, lightweight um, feeling. That's why I'm, I'm using the, this, these embellishments that seem like perhaps a little colorless. I also don't want to you know, add any weight or any more clutter because I don't want it to um, take away from the composition of the photo. I liked that there was the space above. And I think to some degree I maybe wouldn't have done anything at all, but I did want to add a little embellishment. So I want to make sure that it doesn't compete with the photo and take away from it. Thus, I want to make sure that it's lightweight and of the same color family as the photo. Um, everything I'm doing also, it seems like it's creating a heaviness on this side um, with her most of the photo of her body on this left hand side as well as this journaling on this left hand side. I'm just going to adhere this vellum in that corner. I'm going to probably put some um, enamel dots over the top of that. Maybe even a wood piece. I'm not for sure that will cover that, cover that up. I didn't want to adhere it all the way across because I want the vellum to be more see-through. Um, digging through my uh, wood veneer. I'm going to just kind of play around. I, I kind of like the thought of putting an arrow on here, but I think I don't need there to be any more directional clues or cues on here. Um, the at symbol would be okay because it's right here right now at this moment. So this may be something that kind of is both embellishment as well as significantly a symbol. Um, I know I have a geo tag in here, which I think actually I would prefer to use. I think I'm going to stick him right in here. Um, it's right, right before the date. So I think that's where I'm going to put him and add that guy in there. Test it. I kind of like the little asterisk. Um, also, like it's like this is an afterthought. Look here. Here's my information, a footnote to the bigger picture, which would be uh, also a great option since my journaling is not huge, not um, in a thick. Um, pen. I'm kind of just moving things around a little bit. I'm pretty sure I like this geotag um, and that's what I'm going to go with. I went ahead and adhered him and then I'm just going to go ahead and play around with the enamel dots. If you've watched my videos before or looked at my projects before, you know I like to add a few enamel dots here and there and um, I really like the gray ones. I don't want to add too much color as I said before so I'm probably going to um, just use a few of the different gray ones from a couple of these different packages since that's the same color. Sometimes I like to use the enamel dots to create more color, and sometimes I just want to add them so they have a little bit more texture on my page, which is what I'm doing here. So I'm sticking with those that color scheme. 
I kind of think I like the thought of putting a little bit of white out there with that flare adding a little more color and interest. I think I'm going to add a few here to the bottom along the right hand side, uh, help balance this out a little bit, make a triangle out of the embellishments so that it would be the, um, the flare and the geotag and then back down here in the corner with um, navy or black. I'm still kind of testing them out up at the top. I think I want to do something by that flare, but I'm not quite sure yet what I'm going to do. But I know I want to put a few here in this uh, right hand corner. I'm going to just add some of these dark um, black ones from this uh, Christmas collection from Teresa Collins. Um, playing around with the dark gray, perhaps a charcoal also to add down here to this corner. I like that these are on a clear sheet so I can kind of play around and see what I want to do. I switched gears here for just a second and I am going to add um, some white splatters and dots onto um, this page up here in the corner by the where the flare is going to go. I'm just going to test with this paintbrush and see what kind of um, splatter dots I can get. I'm not going to get very big ones. I'm actually testing it on that sample sheet that I've done before. And um, I just picked up a different paintbrush that has a little bit more um, tighter bristles. They're shorter so that when I fleck them with the paint they actually create whole flecks versus as you can see I did it on a dark spot so you can see how it actually comes off my paintbrush the splatters. The shorter, tighter um, paint bristles, paintbrush bristles will create a much nicer splatter when you use your finger like that. You want to make sure there's enough water in your paint when you do this. I'm going to put um, a piece of scratch paper underneath here so I'm not getting it all over my desk. It's kind of hard to see since it's going on a whitish background here, um, but it's creating a tiny, almost like a mist, but actual creation of more stuff. I've gotten it on my flare. But there's a little more bulk in the splatters than there would be if I was doing it with, like, with a, um, a spray. And then I put a lot of water on my brush and I'm going to go in and do a couple of these by hand and let them kind of dry in. If they can, then they can kind of look like they're accidental. Um, and then I can make them bigger and let them soak in. If I go back in with my paper towel and just blot up some of that, it will help it dry a little bit and maybe make them look a little... Um, more accidental versus deliberate. That when they dry, they won't be quite as white as they are here. I like the way this white looks up here in the corner. It kind of counterbalances that black splatter that happened when I dropped my paintbrush down in the bottom. So I'm going to leave it just like that. And I think I am finished with this layout. Here is what it looks like when it's all finished. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's In the Mood to Scrap.